Hey there, in this video we're going to be covering the beginner any% percent and glitchless sections of the speedrun right after you've collected the fire element after Cape of Flames. Um, the advanced and intermediate versions of the any% percent route are going to do a tiny small section of this right at the beginning, but then we'll quickly start doing a glitch called Krenel Clip and skip to the very end of this section. So this is going to be what all of the other runs are going to be doing in the time. Um, we are going to run all the way from here, all the way to reading the sign in Western Woods right before the swamp. Um, right, so let's get straight into this. Okay, so we start right outside Cave of Flames um, after getting warped out from um, the Glee Rock cutscene. We grab the heart container. If you're doing the any percent run, you'll have a bottle with a fairy in it right now, like this. If you are doing the glitch of speed run, you won't have a fairy. You'll just have an empty bottle here. Don't bottle a fairy. It's not. Uh, you're going to have to get dump it um, very quickly, so you can just um, ignore that. Right. So what we do? Um, yeah, you would mash out of the Eslo text box that um, appears here, and then you would come down to here, and you hop down off of that ledge there. Hopping down off that ledge is faster than climbing down the ladder. Then you shrink. There's no cutscene. If you get a cutscene, you, you just need to press R again. It will make you the cutscene stop. And then you roll over into Malari's mines here. And we're just going to go back and talk to Malari. Why? Because we need to get the red sword. It's very important that you get the red sword here before climbing down the mountain. Because it's really slow to um, come go all the way down the mountain, get all the way to Hyrule Castle where we're going to go next, and not have the red sword. It's a lot of newbies mistakes. Don't do that. Um... Everyone makes the mistake once before changing it, but um, yeah, heed this warning to never make that mistake. So, we talk to him, we get the, we, we just mash through all of the text, get the green sword, and then we exit out and regrow. Now we're going to climb down the mountain. So the fast way to climb down the mountain is we hop down off this ledge, come down this ladder, and go directly down this ladder as well. From here we're going to roll down and then roll right. We want to hop down off this ledge. Try and hop down on the lower part of this ledge. If you hop down too high, you jump into this tornado. You can just press R to drop down once you're gliding in the tornado, but it's, it's a little bit slow. When you come over to here, you want to use the cane on that rock um, to um, make it flip up in the air, and then you roll like to this ledge. And you hop down off the ledge straight away. Sometimes you'll get an RNG item drop from that item. If you if you're like if you use the cane and hold like roll and then hold down straight away you're not going to um, get what the item is there so you can kind of ignore what that is when you're here you roll right a bunch of times and you want to roll down onto this um, climbing wall i roughly aim where i want to climb down is in line with where this ladder is here um why because when we climb directly down here um we're going to do this movement here where we roll right to the right twice and it put, lines us perfectly in line here if you're like if you climb down the wall at that point over there and then you can just roll down to here roll down roll left roll down and just climb down these planes and then you roll the right here to get back out of mount Cradle. all right so from here we're just going to do the reverse movement of what we did earlier in the run we're just going to roll right a bunch of times here or roll up roll right right down 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 right right we're going to come into Hyrule Town now um, that guard isn't supposed to be in the way, but just ignore him for now. Like, um, in the speedrun that you're doing, if you're doing beginner any percent and glitchless, that guard's not going to move up and down. The guard's in that state because of, um, I'm playing on a save state from the advanced, uh, and then to meet routes where we, um, skip this guy. Um, I'm just going to do a, like, a demo here to show him that I can, uh, do the spin attack, because that's what he's wanting me to do. Okay, there we go. So he's out of the way. So what would normally happen is you come through here, and you just roll to the right here. So what we want to do here on this first trip into town is we are going to go and get the Wintercrest. This is going to be our fast travel location. Uh, to come back to town. In Glitchless, this is the only Windcrest that you're going to activate in the entire run. In any percent, this is the last one you're going to activate. Uh, we, in any percent, we activated one earlier on. Um, so people in doing the any uh, the intermediate and advanced routes are going to be um, doing 
getting that at a slightly later point, which will be mentioned in the next video. So after we activate that wind crest, we're going to go to the castle. So we're just going to roll up through um, Hyrule Field. Try and avoid these Octoroks. There's two guys there that's going to fire uh, rocks at you. So you can roll up through here. Watch out right here, there's an Ezlo trigger. So you want to walk on that last roll. Roll up to the stair, the bottom of the stairs and then just walk the last part into the Ezlo trigger. Don't roll into the Ezlo trigger, you'll lose time. Then you can roll up into Hyrule Castle. So here you want to roll up, left, up, up left and then if you roll right like you can come up through here. This is a bit of an awkward room and kind of like feel it out for yourself and figure out what the best way you want to roll through there is but like uh, yeah everyone does it slightly differently. Here this is an easy room you should roll right twice and then roll up a couple of times a bit diagonally. Here you can roll up a bunch of times. There's an Ezlo trigger here. This one you can roll into and it's fine you're not going to lose any time because it link triggered into a walk straight away as soon as you hit the trigger he walked a little bit then there's low talk to him straight away so there's a bit of a different as low trigger there here we're going to roll up and we are now in the sanctuary so you just roll directly up you don't want to move left or right at all here you just want to roll directly up and we're going to roll up into this um trigger and it's going to just be this little cut scene at the end of this cutscene, there's uh, some as tech so we just want to mash through this then we're going to roll up a couple times and just go around and it doesn't matter which side you go. You can go around the left side or the right hand side. It's just personal preference. But you go up to the pedestal, you press the button and you put the sword in. And then you start watching this cutscene. This cutscene is a little bit long. Um, yeah, he holds the sword up, screen flashes white. When it fades out from white, we then get a text box. Then the screen starts rumbling, this appears, you walk up to it and then Ezlo will start talking again. So here's another text box. After that text box you immediately get control, so you want to be like holding um, like down after this cutscene because you want to start charging the sword. I'm char I, um, So I have the sword on the A button. If you have the sword on the B button you can use, you can start charging it straight away and not Talk, not read the sign. If I press it straight away, I'm going to get Ezlo talk to me again. So I need to face down and then hold the sword. Now we're going to start charging to create clones. So you start hold, um, start holding the sword to start charge up a spin attack. When the you there's there's like uh, two components to this. The part the particles of the sword go all the way to the end of the sword. When that at that point you can always release the swords to do a spin attack. If you release too early, you don't get a spin attack at all. But after the, ch the spin attack is charged, you'll get this white, uh, you'll get this charge meter that uh, starts charging up. When that gets to full, that's the point that you can start creating clones. And um, so, what we're going to do here is you hold the sword, you stand over one of the things. As soon as the bar gets over to full, you then start moving over to the other, um, the other um, pad. Um, so. When the bar is full, any pads that you're on, you'll start like you, you will activate that pad as a spot that a clone will appear from. This is all really simple stuff. You played the game before, you understand how this works, but I'm just explaining it in gross detail. Um, yeah, so whichever side you're um, you're on, you just need to demonstrate to Ezlo that you can do this. If you try rolling down straight away without doing this. Um, Ezlo, you'll hit an Ezlo trigger and Ezlo will just push you back and tell you, hey, well, you don't know how to clone, like, demonstrate it for me. So, yeah, he really back suits you here. So, you roll down a couple times and you want to roll, uh, like, from here you want to one, two rolls and then walk down to just below the pedestal. Then you start charging the sword and walk down here. We're going to use this distance here to start charging up the sword. As you see, it starts charging perf- it, it gets ready just as we hit these bottom clone pads. And from here you just hold down and your clone um, will activate the switch. Um, right, right after you've activated the switch you want to be holding, you, you, you can press R to kill your clone straight away and hold down left so that you can, or whichever direction you, you chose, um, to just go through the door. Just go through the door. Okay. Putting way too much detail into this but just roll through here. So now we're just going to exit Hyrule Castle, pretty simple stuff. One, two rolls down, two left, up these stairs. From here, I like to hold down right here and then just roll a couple of times. One, two, right, down, down, right, down, down. Here we just roll down a bunch of times. You don't want to go sideways at all. Right now, here's an important thing. 
this is going to be the Moblin fight. Um, this is a bit of a tricky fight, um, so we're going to roll down once and we're just going to trigger a fight straight away. Um, a tr trigger a cutscene. We're going to be mashing through these text boxes um, until Vati runs away. Then there's one last text box as Link starts walking down. So from here, I'm going to make a save state, and I suggest you also make a save state here at this point where Link is walking, uh, walking down. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate the easy strat here. Um, so the easy strat is you roll down, face up, and then you sword mash. And ideally you don't get hit. I got really unlucky there and I got hit. I think I was mashing a bit too fast. But then after that fight's over, you kind of want to roll back up to the top. So let's just um, load the save state again and go for it a couple of times. Because this is a bit of a tricky fight. So yeah. Roll down, face up. Yeah, so I got hit there. But that's like basically the easy strat. that you, It's always going to make the fight never go bad. It's like that's not perfect. That's not a perfect fight, but it's better than getting them go all over the place and um, you know, having to try and fight, do this fight uh, like some other kind of way. Like this, it's um, it's not particularly fast, and you're likely to get hit by the the moblins. So yeah, just come down here, face up. One, two. There you go. And then you, yeah, when the last guy's dead, you roll up to get into the middle so you don't have to walk far to get back to the minute beginning here. Um, right, so now this demonstration here, this is going to be the more difficult strat that ideally does the fight like half a second faster, and it's what you'll see top runners doing. So they hold up here and go to the top, touch the top, walk back down to the middle, and then they go one. It'd be great if I could demonstrate this properly, but... Uh... It's roughly that. So when they were pinned up at the top of the screen, really I should have done three quick slashes there to just kill them straight away. I'll try and do it again. There we go. That's what it should look like. Uh, again, like I didn't get it first try. Uh, it's it's slightly more difficult. It looks cleaner. It look it's definitely like half a second faster if you get it perfect. Um, but yeah. Um, Choose which one you find you prefer the most, uh, but the easy strat rolling down to the bottom facing up or walking up to the top and walking back down. It's definitely more precise than it looks um, at the, 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 the top way. So yeah. Uh, after that fight we just have a cutscene here, so just mash through all of these. You can memorise when the, like, the text boxes are. So um, yeah, this is just a long cutscene that everyone has to watch. And through. So Ezlo will jump onto your head, there's one last text box here, like that, and then you start rolling back down to um, Hyrule Castle. Uh, not Hyrule Castle, Hyrule Town. So from here we're going to roll down like three times, then roll left a bunch of times and exit town out to the left. So here we're going to go down this ladder, and we're going to start charging our sword. Uh, you want to make the clone on the bottom and real link on the top, and we're going to push this boulder. Uh, so here you want to press R to cancel your clone, but then immediately roll left as well. So like, I normally like hold up left here and then just do like a double R press. So the first R kills the clone, the second R actually rolls Link over here. And it perfectly lines you up with this, so you can just roll straight up here. So from here, uh, we roll down twice, three times, roll right, roll down, roll right, right, down, down. Ideally there's not an Octo Rock in the way there, but that's kind of like the way I do it. Uh, and then, like, as soon as you transitioned into the next room, it's going to put you straight into a cutscene. So, this is the PK Gasm cutscene. This is the one with the king making the weird noise. Um, you know, happy, fun cutscene. You can just uh, learn when to mash through it here. So, king does exclamation mark. Text box, mash through that. Batty teleports because he forgot how to walk. Um, he teleports here, then there's a bunch of text boxes. Roar. Um... Yeah, Fata Black comes back here. When the guards walk up to the top, there's going to be another text box. And a bunch of text boxes, then a question mark, and then one last text box. Then it fades back to Ezlo. More text boxes from Ezlo, and then you gain control again. So we're going to roll a bunch, bunch of times down. Roll over to the left and read this sign. It's very important that you read this sign. Do not forget to read this exact sign right here. 
This sign is what triggers the boots side quest to actually, like, um, so that you can start doing it. If you don't do that and just go directly to Hyrule Castle right now to try and get the boots, um, you're not going to be able to go and talk to the Minish there uh, to progress it anymore. Now, another thing is, what happens if you accidentally come over to here and you sword slash the sign? Oh no, you can't read the sign. What you need to do is you need to roll all the way up here to Castor Wilds, avoiding all of those awful enemies that are in the way. As soon as you enter Castor Wilds like this, that also sets the flag. Now, it's a little bit slower to go all the way to Castor Wilds, that's why we read that sign so you don't have to come, uh, uh, you know, waste 10 seconds coming out all the way over here. It's not a really great idea. But yeah. You read that um, sign, and then after you've read that sign, you can roll over to the right here, push this boulder, roll over to the right, roll over through here, slash this bit of um, like tree or whatever, and roll up into town. Now, here's where I'm going to leave this tutorial video off. We have now caught back up to where the advanced and intermediate speedruns for uh, the Any% percent category have um, have got un gotten up to. They were busy doing Chrono Clip in this meantime, but uh, now everyone is back together, all of the routes converge, and we are going to be doing the Boots quest, and that's going to be in the next video. So thank you for watching, and check out the next one for a continuation of the tutorial video. Thanks for watching.